JavaScript is pregnant. It has a bun in the oven. Bruh. Bun 1.0 came out this week and people are pretty excited. There's been quite a bit of chatter online, so I thought I would chime in with my thoughts on the project and where it's headed. In case you haven't heard of it, Bun is a toolkit for running, building, testing, and debugging JavaScript and TypeScript code bases, and it's pretty fast. Folks in the JavaScript community are pretty excited, and it's clear that they've put in a lot of work to get to 1.0. If we step back and look at the JavaScript ecosystem as a whole, it's clear that developers want two things. One, they're frustrated by the amount of tools it takes to get a JavaScript project up and running and to do debugging and testing and just the state of tooling, basically. And two, they want to have fast Node.js. Node.js is great. Developers really love it. And it has a massive ecosystem of packages. So they want that and they want it to be really, really fast wherever they want to deploy their applications. Now, this isn't the first time someone has tried to take on these challenges. On one hand, we have Dino, which is a new runtime that started pretty different from Node.js, but over time has added more and more support for Node.js and now has full compatibility with the entire ecosystem. We also have a failed project in Rome, which was trying to take on the bundling and testing and just the sprawl of JavaScript tools and have a single package. That project has since been discontinued and now there's a community project that's pushing the open source side forward, but Needless to say, there's been a lot of investment in this space trying to make Node.js fast and have a great developer experience with JavaScript and TypeScript. So Bun 1.0 came out this week. It has a fantastic blog post and video. I love this clip of every reference of the word bun in the video. Bun 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 and depth so you can really understand why Bun exists, what problem it's solving, and why it's doing things a little bit differently. So highly recommend this both as a resource of how to write a really good developer-focused blog post, but also to learn more about Bun. Now in the blog post, Bun talks about performance, it shares some benchmarks, and it also shares some opinions and trade-offs that it's made around how it believes the best way to push the ecosystem forward is with CommonJS and ESM. And I really like this conversation in particular where Jared is talking a bit about their choice to allow CommonJS and ESM imports in the exact same file. And it's interesting to see that it's not like they're trying to push CommonJS forward. They want folks to use ESM, but they're absorbing a lot of the complexity on right now this fragmented world that developers have to live in where some things are CJS, some are ESM. Bun's trying to just make this work and make it easy for you to not have to think about these things. Now I can also understand on the node side that they've made some trade-offs here like backwards compatibility, but I think it's worth starting the broader conversation around, is this something that maybe should be in Node.js itself? I think it's at least worth talking about and I'm glad to see Bun pushing things forward here. Especially when you see how much Jared and the Bun team really care about pushing forward the ecosystem and really working with the existing Node.js community as well too. I particularly liked this discussion where the Node.js team was seeing some issues around folks asking for why this thing was not supported in Bun, and Jared owns up to it. He says, these are all issues in Bun. Please cite this tweet and send them over our way and we'll get them fixed because their goal is to have compatibility with all of the things in the ecosystem. So I really love that approach. Now on the performance side, there was also a lot of opinions around the numbers and benchmarks that Bun shared in the post. I think two things can be true here. On one hand, the Bun team has put in a ton of work into performance, into optimizing, into running all these benchmarks and just trying to make a really fast tool. And I also think that the Node team right now has just been focused on other things. In this tweet, they talk about how they're currently focused on adding new capabilities and making things more secure. And in this one, they talk about how there is some work being done on performance in Node.js and that there's a broad range of benchmarks that evaluate performance. Now I say, I think both things can be true because we shouldn't discredit the amount of work that Bun has done. And also I think the Node team has done a lot of work as well too. So 
long way of saying I'm really happy to see the entire ecosystem move forward. And I think both sides are really putting in a lot of work. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention also that a lot of the work on Node.js is just free volunteer work. So kudos to the team for putting in a lot of effort there as well too. But yeah, I'm super excited about Bud. I think it's really exciting, both as a runtime, as a toolkit, as a package manager. And I want to start using it more for some of my applications and some of the things I'm building. And, you know, maybe we'll get support for Bun on Vercel as well, too. So if you'd like to see that, let me know. Uh, give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.